divine truth frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. The subject of this session is spirits. This is session one. How can we be certain that this concept of spirits is not just a projection of our own mind or projections of our own mind, figments of our imagination or otherwise not real? Well, often I've heard people who think that they're talking to spirits um, actually just making up the entire thing and projecting something that's totally not real. So the reality is we can't be certain because <laughs> unless we can see the spirit who is talking to the individual and feel their presence and understand their personality with any sensitivity, then it's highly unlikely that we'll be able to determine with any sense of certainty whether it's the person who's claiming to speak from, you know, on behalf of the spirit is actually doing so or is just you know, making up things with their own mind. That's the reality. The power of our human imagination is pretty strong. We are able to create many things from it, design many things from it, architect many things from it, um, and as a result of that, we're also able to architect false things from it. Mm -hmm. so, so the only way we can do it with certainty is we need to examine things with a lot more care. We need to be much more careful with the way we examine all of these interactions. I've seen many so-called mediums not channeling a spirit at all, but rather just telling a person, claiming that it's from a spirit because it gives the person more desire to know than if the person heard it from a person on earth by themselves. So one of the problems that we have on earth is that we're willing to listen to people who are invisible, usually much more than we're willing to listen to a person who's visible, and this is a problem. We need to have a lot more... Is that because we perceive that they're in a good condition? Because Well, we don't know their condition. That's a reality. But why the fact we... that we can't see them means we don't know their condition. Yes, yes. <laughs> so the reality is we don't know their condition, but for some reason we assume, due to our belief systems, we assume that a person who's in a better... Uh, you know, who has passed must automatically be in a better state than when they passed. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case at all. In fact, in many cases people who have passed continue to degrade their condition through their choices that are unloving. So we could actually have known the person before they passed and they now be even in a worse condition than they were when they passed. Mm -hmm. So it's not always... We make a lot of assumptions on earth because of our belief systems and our belief systems all need to be tried. They mm -hmm. all need to be proven. And the only way we can do this is by doing mass experiments. We can't we can't just make one assumption or a, gr or a group of assumptions without experimentation. So unless you have seen spirits and unless you have talked to them and unless you know that they are the people you're speaking to and unless you've had the experience like we have of seeing it on the reverse end as well, seeing mm -hmm. the spirits talking to the humans, um, there is really no other way of determining the truth than through the process of experimentation. And what I'm suggesting is that we have the ability on Earth to do wide varieties of experiments in this, in this area of metaphysical nature, but we have a deep resistance to doing so for lots of reasons. One of the reasons is to do with public opinion and another is to do with religious perception. So if you look at public opinion as an issue, most people don't want to deny the existence of the spirit world because they'd be freaked out if they knew about it. Um, so that's a great fear-based reason to not find out. Many religious people, particularly of the Christian religious faith, uh, ha there's, there's things in the Bible that, say, that state categorically that we should not and cannot communicate with spirits and under the threat of God basically disowning us and us dying and being punished for such a thing. And so, of course, that creates a lot of fear in the Christian faith. And there's one and a half billion Christians on the planet, of course. And so they are all being influenced through that belief to not investigate the truth. So if we add up all of the different types of people who are influenced to not investigate the truth about the spirit world, there's literally two thirds to three quarters of this planet who have an emotional or religious investment in not finding out the truth about the spirit world. Mm -hmm. 
So what I would suggest, rather than like listening to all of that, is that we need to set up a far more scientific basis for investigation of the spirit world. And that's going to mean putting aside religious beliefs and putting aside emotional beliefs, fear-based beliefs, and actually looking at the situation from a purely, from a purely scientific perspective. And to do that, if we did that, the reality is we would have, if we had done that thousands of years ago, the reality is by now we would know for certain mm -hmm. the, the existence of these things. And we have the ability to do that now. But unfortunately, because of the earth-based resistances, that's not happening. There are also resistances in the spirit world to us knowing for certain whether spirits exist and whether people who have passed over still exist. And that is they like having influence over people on earth from an invisible perspective. If we could see them and if we could hear them and if we had instruments to measure them and measure their presence, then of course they would all be exposed and it would be much more difficult for them to deceive us in any way. So my suggestion is that the influences to not find out the truth about the spirit world come from a large number of different areas, emotional, religious and spirit world, motivations that cause us to never discover the truth about the issue. Mm -hmm. So you're actually saying that at the moment the only way to be certain is through our own experience. And through experimentation. And if yes, if we're to be collectively as a human race certain, we need to experiment and really yes. prove and it is possible to prove Certainly. these things. And, yeah. uh, and in fact most people who have done, done an investigation for their own self, for, for the, to search for the truth for themselves, end up under, uh, with, uh, and do it properly, if they do it properly with people who understand what's going on, they end up believing in a spirit world mm -hmm. as a result of their investigations. Most people who investigate it on earth eventually end up believing in it. The, the reason for that, of course, is that there is plenty of evidence that we can, we can gather. However, the evidence is not generally allowed for lots of reasons, scientific uh, reasons in terms of the scientific community, uh, being very resistive to such a concept, uh, religious reasons, because mo the majority of the world's primary religions are against any concept of communicating with anybody who has died or passed, and there are also emotional reasons, and the emotional reasons are all to do around fear. Mm -hmm. The fear of, uh, you know, the average person, if they knew that they were being watched constantly with every single thing that they do in their life, every single action they take, when, when they're naked in bed, when they're, you know, when they're having sex, when they're, when they're out doing things that they want to cover over from everybody else. And if the average person knew that every one of these things is noticed by somebody, somebody usually in the spirit world, the average person on the planet would generally freak out. They'd get <laughs> pretty they're stressed out about that. And so there's a huge amount of fear about not knowing these, you know, they want to not know these particular things. And of course that drives the ability to investigate. Mm -hmm. When there's fear, religious opposition, scientific opposition, is one of the, in fact, the issue of spirits is one of the few areas in our lives that there is opposition from almost every quarter, even though those quarters oppose each other generally. Yes. <laughs> there's yep. opposition from the spirit world, there's opposition from the earth, in the areas of science, religion, philosophy, and in terms of emotional opposition, you know, from a mm -hmm. fear-based opposition. And if you look at all of the opposition to finding out the truth about it, it is no wonder that even given all the evidence that is available, we still don't have a certainty about it. And yet so many of us are still fascinated. So much of the human race is fascinated. Of course. They? Anything that's denied to such a degree but is a truth, of course, is going to create a lot of fascination yeah. with anybody on the earth and in the spirit world. So the reality is that there are large numbers of people on earth who are totally fascinated <laughs> about it. Even, and there is very good reason why, because it is a truth that we can scientifically investigate, but there is a huge amount of weight towards not investigating it at this point in time in human history. Mm. Mm.